Sumitomo News presents Uber. Selfish half dressed brat steals from Uber driver. Watch. Now let's see that again in slow motion. This brazen theft reportedly happened on August 12th when this woman, identified as 18 year old Gabrielle Canales, decided to grab cash out of Uber driver Mohammed H. Buyan's tip jar before jumping out of his car. The callous thief calls herself Gabita on social media, and she likes to post half naked pictures of herself online. And if you think she was feeling any shame about her crime going viral, you'd be wrong. She apparently has been relishing in all the attention and even mocked those who were outraged, memeing a screenshot of her crime and defending her actions, saying she only took five bucks from the jar and claims she returned it later. It isn't clear whether her friends knew about the theft. Uber reportedly urged the driver to take the matter to the police and have since banned Gabita from using the app ever again. She may have to switch to another ride sharing app instead. So if you're a Lyft driver, take a good look at this face and keep an eye on your tip jar. Four states and 300 miles. A dude from New Jersey went to a frat party in West Virginia and got so drunk that he unknowingly took a $1,600 Uber ride back to New Jersey. Kenneth Bachman of Sewell, New Jersey, was visiting friends last week near West Virginia University and went to a fraternity party. After a fun night with the bros, Bachman did the right thing and hired an Uber to take him home. The only problem, home was a five-hour ride away, and Bachman thought he was going back to the place he was staying during his trip. The driver was definitely up for the job, and when Bachman got home, the fare was a whopping $1,635.93. Man, that is not how you want to end a trip. To make matters worse, he accidentally ordered an Uber XL, which is the more expensive ride. But Bachman was a good sport and paid the driver, and gave the driver a five-star rating. Uber said the driver did what Bachman wanted, and the company has been in touch with him, and he apparently agreed to pay the fare. However, Bachman said he still had to go back to West Virginia to pick up the bags he left behind. An $18,000 Uber ride? Uber is apologizing to a Toronto customer after they accidentally charged him over 18,000 Canadian dollars for a short ride on December 8th. Uber passenger Hisham Salama took an Uber X that should have cost him about 20 bucks after surge prices. However, when Salama arrived at his destination, he was then hit with a whopping 18,518 Canadian dollars and 50 cents. In an interview with Vice, Salama said Uber first refused to refund him when the company's customer support said that they confirmed the amount is correct. Um, they might want to check that again. Salama took the matter to Twitter, with his tweet receiving over 400 retweets. After that amount of attention, Uber finally backed down and said the charge was an error and has since been resolved. After providing a full refund to Salam, Uber explained the insane overcharge was a result of driver error, not a technical glitch, and they're now investigating how it happened. Uber reckons you'll be able to hail a flying cab by 2026. Ride-hailing company Uber released a very intriguing white paper last month. The nearly 100-page document envisions a future where commuters jetting city to city in compact aircraft could be as normal as taking the train to work. Uber's prediction of a world with commonplace urban air transit systems relies heavily on the widespread use of small self-flying electric aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capability. Also known as VTOL, it's most commonly used by helicopters as well as a small number of military aircraft. Uber says a network of VTOL hubs or landing pads, dubbed Verti ports and Verti stops, could be used as terminals to ferry passengers around.
Unlike cars, buses, and trains, VTOLs aren't susceptible to traffic jams or delays. They can fly from A to B with no fixed route. Uber estimates the cost of a 15-minute flight may eventually reach as low as $21. Uber expects the aircraft could fly at cruise speeds of around 150 miles per hour and won't go above 10,000 feet. The VTOL would be powered by rechargeable batteries that would maintain 30 minutes of reserve energy. Uber won't manufacture the aircraft, but predicts the market will have produced them by the early 2020s. Uber needs to collaborate with governments in the private sector for this to become a reality. So that could take longer than a decade, especially on the regulatory side. Uber suspends services in Taiwan after being surged with fines. Looks like Uber is saying a vuitazen to Taiwan after being hit with millions of dollars in government fines. The ride-sharing app said it hopes the suspension of its service will encourage Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen to hit the reset button in negotiations. Uber has been butting heads with officials who say its operations are illegal. They say Uber has permission to operate as a tech company but not to provide transportation services. Uber tried to drive past regulatory concerns, but then the fines started surging. Within the last month, Taiwan has slapped the company with some Uber fines totaling $7.4 million. Uber's decision to take a break will affect more than 100,000 drivers and countless riders who've come to rely on the app. Rather than just slapping Uber with ridiculous fines, Taiwan needs to start embracing technological innovation within the taxi industry. But in order for any real progress to be made, it looks like President Tsai and Uber may have to meet halfway. Uber hits pause. Not the greatest day for Uber. A female pedestrian was struck and killed by an Uber autonomous vehicle in Tempe on Sunday night. The fatality is believed to be the first known death by an autonomous test vehicle. The Uber vehicle was reportedly traveling northbound at around 40 miles per hour in autonomous mode with a backup driver behind the wheel around 10 p.m. That's when a woman walking a bicycle outside the crosswalk was struck by the Uber SUV. The woman was transported to the hospital where she died from her injuries. In response, Uber has stopped self-driving tests in Tempe, San Francisco, Pittsburgh and Toronto. The National Transportation Safety Board is opening an investigation and sending investigators to Tempe. Oh, Uber. Uber may have risen to the top, but apparently it got help from illegal places, at least according to a doozy of an accusation letter from an ex-employee. Said employee had worked on counter-narcotics ops in Colombia and even went to war in Iraq before he was recruited to help Uber keep an eye on its rivals. It was ruthless and infinitely sketchy in obtaining trade secrets, spying, eavesdropping, and impersonating drivers just to get a leg up in the competition. They doled out the bribes, mostly to government officials, to unblock markets and make the climb to the top easier. To top it off, the company went to great lengths not to get caught. They used burner phones, vanishing messages, and secret servers so nothing would be recorded. But you know, life finds a way. Uber is in big trouble. Personal information on millions of Uber accounts were stolen by hackers in 2016, in a breach that the company has kept secret for more than a year. In October 2016, two hackers gained access to a third-party cloud-based service used by Uber and obtained information on 57 million of its users. Compromised data from the attack included names, email addresses, phone numbers, as well as license numbers of around 600,000 U.S. drivers. 
The company claims users' bank and credit card information, social security numbers, trip location history, and dates of birth were not accessed. The hackers reportedly emailed Uber asking for money and were paid 100,000 U.S. dollars to delete the stolen files and keep quiet about the breach. News of the hack was not disclosed to either of its users or any government agencies, despite a number of state and federal laws requiring the company to do so. Uber's chief security officer and senior lawyer have been sacked for their shady handling of the hack. The New York State Attorney General has also opened an investigation into the incident. Uber to roll out driverless car service in Pittsburgh. Uber is launching a self-driving car service this month in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In 2014, Uber hired members of Carnegie Mellon's robotics department and built up a team of engineers, robotics experts and mechanics to work toward the goal of replacing human drivers with robots. The Pittsburgh service will use Volvo XC90 SUVs equipped with Uber's autonomous driving system. An engineer seated at the wheel and a co-pilot in the passenger seat will keep track of the vehicle's activity and safety. Customers will be chosen at random for trips in the autonomous cars. Those trips will be free. Uber started testing self-driving Ford Fusions in Pittsburgh earlier this year in a trial with the Detroit automaker. However, Uber's Pittsburgh project is still very much a beta test. The self-driving Volvos will have humans inside, ready to take control at a moment's notice. And even if the vehicles were reliably able to drive themselves without human supervision, convincing customers and regulators to accept them may prove an even bigger hurdle. Uber driverless truck delivers beer. A driverless Uber truck loaded with 50,000 cans of Budweiser made an 120-mile journey across Colorado last week in the first commercial shipment by a self-driving truck. Auto is Uber's self-driving truck subsidiary. Its vehicles can drive autonomously on the highway, leaving the driver free to do other tasks or relax. Auto's Volvo trucks are retrofitted with LiDAR, radar, and cameras, which collect data that onboard computers translate into driving directions. The self-driving trucks maintain a safe distance from other vehicles and only change lanes when necessary. The technology only works on the highway so drivers are still needed to navigate trickier city roads. The company believes that in future, self-driving trucks will drive on the interstate, with human drivers handling the last few miles into town. Trucks haul 70% of freight in the U.S., but the industry has a shortfall of 48,000 drivers, which could reach 175,000 within 10 years. Auto hopes that driverless trucks can make up the deficit of drivers reduce emissions, and increase efficiency. It also thinks driverless trucks will make roads safer because human error is almost always the reason behind the 400,000 truck crashes in the U.S. each year, which claim 4,000 lives. So I guess we can all drink to that.